Hello and welcome to another installment of a Photomagical 4 webinar. Today we are going to tackle Photomagical 4.4 and as always with me is Peter. Peter is Mr. Photomagical. Hi Peter. Hi. Great to have you here and great that you all found the time to join in. My name is Bastian. I'm the well video guy here at Boinks and yeah we will show you new stuff that we will that we have in Photomagical 4.4. There will be time for questions after we are done with, uh, with what we have prepared and just put them into the chat and Oliver, our boss, is sitting behind the chat and he is gonna forward me questions. So, um, I would say there is nothing more we can... Uh, Let's get started. Yeah, we, we don't want to waste your time too much. So, um, I would say we, we um, start with what is new in Photomagical 4? I read the version history and what I saw is the new thing, 64 bits. What is 64 bits? What does it mean to uh, Well, someone? 64 bits uh, um, is a new technology that a lot of applications have supported for quite a while and we finally support it uh, as well now. 64-bit um, applications uh, are often a little bit faster, but the more important thing is that they support larger amounts of data. Okay, so that means everything's better and faster now. Larger slideshows <laughs> and uh, less uh, lag when you're working Th with them. That is great. Another thing that I saw, and as a Lightroom user, I was pretty happy about, we now have Lightroom 5 support, do we? That's right, yeah. That is pretty Starting cool. Starting in 4.4. Uh, so everyone can access their Lightroom 5 libraries just as they could with Lightroom 4. Exactly, yeah. That's pretty cool. And the other great big new thing we have is video support. We, we had video support before something changed. So Yes, um, roughly vi what? video support has been uh, completely reworked with a new uh, technology. We used to have uh, QuickTime in uh, in macOS for 20 years. Uh, it was yeah. introduced way back in 1991 by Apple yeah. and has acquired uh, support for lots of uh, um, different file formats, um, video encodings, and lots of devices over the years. It was quite a powerful technology, but uh, over the years it did uh, kind of did show it, its age. and. Yeah. It just didn't uh, uh, keep a pace with the rest of the technology advancements in Mac OS X. And uh, Apple finally decided um, they have to start over to, uh, to make sure that uh, multimedia support still uh, um, is as powerful as it should be. So that means they didn't just go in and said, well, we patch QuickTime over and over again, like they did for 20 years, but they started from scratch. Is that what you're saying, uh, basically? They did try that, but they uh, they found out that it was better to start from scratch, especially when they started with the iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to come up with something completely different that, that also works for uh, mobile devices. Okay, so ba basically we we have what, what they great from scratch for the iPhone now on the Mac as yes. well. Yes, and so the new technology is called AV Foundation, um, audio video foundation uh, technology. And it started out, like I mentioned, it started out on iOS for the iPhones and iPods, uh, also iP iPad, mm -hmm. but they uh, ported it back to uh, uh, to Mac OS X. Yeah. And um, wh when they did that, they decided um, that they're not going to support QuickTime forever. Uh -huh. So eventually, all applications have to switch from QuickTime to AV Foundation. Okay, so we and now now is the time that we decided to do it as well. Okay, just so you understand what we're going to do here, we're talking a little bit of the theory um, that you need to know to understand why things are different now. So mm -hmm. we will get our hands dirty in a couple of minutes, but. That's a little bit of a theory we just have to um, cover. So Photomagical had to well migrate as well from QuickTime to mm -hmm. AV Foundation. Well, so um, what does this mean for the user? Well, um, if you try to work with video and, and Photomagic and you, you try to do fancy stuff, uh, you might have noticed that uh, sometimes uh, there was some stuttering in video or uh, at the beginning of the movie, uh, there was a little bit of a lag before it started. Uh, it was especially apparent if you did video uh, 
uh, editing with Photomagical mm -hmm. um, like several um, consecutive uh, video sequences with cuts in between, uh, you wouldn't get a really precise cut. Sometimes the, uh, there used to be uh, a couple of black frames in between that you just couldn't uh, get rid of. Yeah, well, yeah. Considering HD video and all the stuff, I mean, it's as you said, multiple it's a, streams of, it's a of HD video yeah. uh, um, was difficult for uh, yeah. for for quick time. Oh, I see that. And so, with the new technology, um, uh, uh, everything's really smooth. Uh, no more stuttering and precise cuts. So that's a major benefit for the uh, for the user. Then, okay. So that sounds all really, really great. Um, so. <laughs> Let's be honest. Are there any gotchas? Are there any things we have to be aware of? Well, yeah. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, QuickTime uh, used to have support for lots of file format and video encodings. Yeah. And uh, when Apple started over, um, they decided to only support um, the important mm -hmm. um, uh, codecs and get rid of all the historical baggage. Okay. So, um, um, those file formats are still supported, and everything that's uh, uh, historical stuff, legacy stuff, will have to be converted to be uh, uh, usable for AV Foundation. But on the other hand, that means best performance. Exactly. Okay, good. So, it's but it's not like the user has to do it themselves manually. We will help them with that. Uh, yeah. That is that is. One and we're going to show you uh, how to do that. Exactly. How this is done. So we already covered one page. So. We are mm -hmm. pretty close to getting the, our hands dirty. So um, I would say, should we just jump why, in? Why don't we get started? Yeah. Okay, so let's say we started, we, we created a, a slideshow with an old, with an old um, codec video in it. So mm -hmm. um, do we have to do anything before we open it in Photomagic 4.4? No, 4 .4? no, you just open the slideshow like you always did. Okay. Uh, why don't? Why Let's don't just you, why don't you give it a try? Okay, I will give it a try. So we have this this is this is a, an let's call it old slideshow and we open it up and we'll see right away um well the following movie contains uh, movie files can no longer be played by Photomatic and need to be converted from a more suitable format. Okay, so all I have to do now is click convert or maybe choose another format. Yeah, um, the uh, pop-up here um, lets you choose between a couple of formats, H.264 or um, two different ProRes uh, flavors. Um, if you don't know uh, yet what those are, we'll talk about that a little bit, little bit later. For now, we'll just leave it with the default uh, H.264. Let's just hit Convert. Okay, now, now it, simply, it simply does the conversion for me, so I don't have to do anything else, basically. But uh, if you don't want uh, this automatic conversion, you can also opt out and uh, do it manually by yourself. Just just be aware, if you don't do it automatically, you need to do it manually, otherwise you won't be able to play back that video in Photomagical 4.4. So in general, once you open something with a incompatible video, um, make sure you convert it as soon as possible. Yeah. So yeah, the, the video is a little bit longer. Um, it's it's converting it to H.264 now, and once it's done, um, it's it, it the the video itself is going to be replaced inside of the inside of the photo. All you have to do uh, is file, save the slideshow again, which is pretty cool. So um, we're going to be done in a couple of seconds, and let's see. Now we also see there is there the let's zoom in on this a little bit. Come on. No, what we see there is a the thumbnail is back, and we can we can play it back if we wanted to. So let's give it a playback. Okay, so I I see something else happening here. So I don't know if that carries across very good over over the stream, but that video was created with a tape-based camera, was it? Uh, it was an HDV camera uh, with interlaced video. Okay, so. QuickTime back in the day also did deinterlacing, so that it removes it removed the the edges of of well the 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 comb comb edges of of video. And uh, at the moment, uh, AV Foundation uh, isn't doing that yet uh, for the time being. Uh, I'm sure uh, this will change over time. So that means. Um, 
that interlaced video should be converted in a way that it's uh, deinterlaced automatically. Unfortunately, the built-in conversion doesn't do that yet. Okay. So uh, if you if you still have lots of deinterlaced video, um, um, you um, might want to do uh, it manually in a third-party application. So there is th there are two ways of doing that. So, but before we do, um, let's just save this one. So now we have mm -hmm. have a version that, that has the new video in it, mm -hmm. and we can close it. And the next time we open it up, okay, we save. save. Let's do that, and we are we're we're um, done here. So. What do we do if we have an interlaced video? You just you just told us. Well, we can convert it to something. So you brought you brought you brought with you video with you. Yeah. So that this is basically the same video. So what are the two ways of of well, getting you, rid of interlacing? You could open it in QuickTime Player, mm -hmm. um, and which also does uh, the movie conversion. Yeah. And uh, just resave it. Okay. So. Let's just try that. I'm mm -hmm. going to open that one. And basically, without me doing anything, it jumps into the conversion right away. So all I have to do is wait for it. And eventually, it's going to be done. And then I can save it from QuickTime Player. Sometimes, though, this doesn't work. Uh, for some reason, sometimes. So we, okay, we can, so, we can so see. So now um, we've got the converted video, and it's de interlaced. So all we have to do is. Save it again. Save. No, we, yeah, let's call it converted and mm -hmm. save it to the same place. Movies. There we go. And this file can now be dragged into uh, Photomagical without any problems. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, the deinterlaced video. Okay, sometimes for some reason, if you open an interlaced video, it's not going to be displayed as interlaced in QuickTime. Um, player 10, so but still going to be interlaced in Photomagical. So there is another way of converting this to um, a deinterlaced video, um, and all you have to do is get the free software handbrake. You can find a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that on our website at boings.com slash connect, but I will show you because it's really, really easy. So you download handbrake and install it, Yes, we all, of course we want the latest and greatest updates. So, and I use the interlaced uh, file that I have. I open it. Handbrake is going to analyze it for a second, and you can download a preset from our website that will create a deinterlaced version of this file. So all I have to do is, well, yeah, it's going to save it to the desktop. That is just fine, and I hit start. And now Handbrake converts it to a high quality. H.264 file that I can now find on my desktop, and it is not interlaced anymore. What a beautiful plan! And that file uh, can also be used without problems in Photomagical. Correct. So um, let's let's say we don't have have a have a pre-built slideshow already done, and we drag in a incompatible file. Um, what's what's going to happen in Photomagico? Well, uh, this, basically the same thing happens uh, um, uh, as when you open a, an old slideshow that contains mm -hmm. uh, legacy video. Okay. Uh, when you drag in a video file that is not compatible, Photomagico will tell you that it's not com uh, compatible and offer, will offer to convert it automatically. Okay, I'm going to try that. So I'm going to my movies folder. So there is video snippets, for example. So I can most of the time I can tell from the from the thumbnails here at the side. Well, if there is a thumb an actual thumbnail with content, I can very likely use this thing right inside of Photomagic mm -hmm. without doing anything. If there is a quick time um, thumbnail, well, there's probably going to be a problem. But well, it's not really a problem. All I have to do is do the same thing as I did before. Hit convert. It's going to convert it to a compatible mm -hmm. file format, and I'm good afterwards. And as you can see uh, on the stage, uh, you see this uh, movie uh, icon with uh, uh, with the um, crossed out symbol. Uh, as soon as it's converted, you get to see the thumbnails okay. uh, and the video image. There we are. So. 
one one caveat if you as you said before if you don't want to do that right now because maybe it's it's a long it's a long um movie excuse me mm -hmm. um if you can cancel nothing bad is going to happen right now but keep in mind that one is not converted you will see there's a gray area down here in the in the, the storyboard, storyboard and if you hit play while playing this it will show you something um show you an information that there is that this one is not going to be play playable but it's that again is pretty easy you have the warning triangle down here and then you can say convert movie and it's going to convert the movie just as it did before exactly so you don't have to do it right away when you open a slideshow or a drag in a new movie file you can also uh, choose to do it later yeah maybe you just know you're going to need a coffee in 15 minutes you just do it 15 <laughs> minutes later um, because converting movies um, that are quite long uh, also takes a long time. Yes, yeah, even that's a state-of-the-art MacBook Pro with a Retina screen, so it still it still takes. Re-encoding movies does take some time yeah. and processing power. Yeah. Okay, so um, well, we we touched a lot of a lot of the the places where we get in touch with video, but one other place where we get in touch with video is exporting or sharing. So what's new here? So we have the we have the sharing we have the sharing um, button. Um, yes. Um, well, most of the export options um, will look pre pretty familiar. We still have um, YouTube and, video, uh, and Vimeo. Mm -hmm. We have uh, support for the different i devices like iPhone, iPads, iPods, uh, and Apple TV. Mm -hmm. And um, there's still um, export for DVD. A ProRes video is used for uh, for exporting to applications like Final Cut okay. Pro. And uh, the QuickTime export is gone now um, since we're not using QuickTime any anymore. Instead, we have custom video. Okay, so um, well, cus custom video that sounds new and exciting. What's uh, what's that all about? Well. Um, um, the last option, custom video, um, really gives you a lot of uh, different uh, options if you want to tweak um, um, the uh, f the out exported uh, output file. Mm -hmm. um, if any of the um, uh, formats like for iPhone or Apple TV don't really meet your requirements, you can uh, adjust uh, everything as you like. So let's say you need a smaller screen size you need a smaller file size and less bit higher, rate whatever higher you... frame rate uh, whatever so but what this is going to create is an h.264 and video again um with all the settings you, you can well uh you can choose between different uh codecs that is um, um, well, in the, in the first section rendering you choose uh the size of the video and the frame rate mm-hmm and in the se second uh, section, you, you can choose which kind of um, codec. Okay. It's got H.264, JPEG, and uh, three different uh, ProRes flavors. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, let's go back to... Uh, um, you can choose, uh, for some codecs, you can choose which um, file format you want. Okay. Like in, in this case, uh, either a QuickTime uh, file format or MPEG-4 um, file format. Mm -hmm. And you can choose um, a bitrate and keyframes, but I would suggest stay away from those. Um, stick with the automatic uh, option, unless you really know what what you, yeah, because, what you need or what you want. Uh, because automatic usually does the right thing yeah. and uh, gives you a good image quality. Okay, w one one thing you touched on before, and we, we already had that before. We are sharing to YouTube and Vimeo. If you want to share, um, if you share to do those two, you can use the the exported version that is then on YouTube or Vimeo anywhere on the web you want. If you can import it, uh, embed it in your blog on on your website, mm -hmm. um, wherever you want that. So that is that is pretty that is pretty cool. And, and I don't know if you mentioned it already, but from my experience, exports are a lot faster. Yeah, uh, it has gotten quite a bit faster. Um, depending on uh, if you only use images uh, it's it's dramatically faster than it was before um, if your slideshow contains movies it might take a little bit longer to render it okay and uh, one more thing that we didn't mention yet um, image quality has also gotten better mm -hmm. um, 
in the past, uh, color accuracy uh, sometimes wasn't uh, as good as it should have been, yep. and that's uh, fixed now with AV Foundation. That is pretty cool. So that is some. I mean, you for, most of your photographers, you just know that getting accurate color is key. And now there we are, and that is one of the perks that comes. So the exported movie now looks exactly, and the colors and uh, the brightness levels yeah. look exactly the same as they and did is, in uh, Photomagical. And that is very important. Okay, so these are these are the, well, the main new things, but um, well, maybe you know that from all the keynotes that other companies made, there is always one more thing, and well, we have one more thing. We, Yes, uh, we uh, figured since this release was ma mostly about video support, um, why don't we add one uh, new uh, feature that's also about video? And uh, a couple of months ago, Oliver uh, told us about an uh, idea, a n new way of editing videos yep. uh, uh, with Photomagico. So, and so we decided to implement that. And... Um, it's actually um, a little based on the way it, uh, it used to be done way back when uh, movies were still uh, edited uh, in the analog yeah. world. Yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the cutters used uh, to slice the, um, the movie uh, um, with, uh, with a knife, throw away the stuff that... Uh, um, and the, the film strip, uh, yep. throw away the stuff that uh, wasn't needed and glue back together the other film strips uh -huh. uh, with glue. And we're going to do uh, something very similar now. The, uh, the difference is we have digital glue now and it's fully automatic. So we prepared something. We pre prepared a slideshow with a long video in it, which is a pretty nice video. But there are a couple of, of parts in the video that we just don't want to show now and then we just want to get rid of and here is the new fancy way and i'm really excited part of my day job is editing video and this is something different and it's blazingly fast so what we do is we go to timeline mode that you already know and then we grab our playhead and we scrub and we scrub through the video you know that from from other from other video editing applications and so we scrub through the video and let's say I want to start here um, where the tree starts to come into the frame and all I do is I press the C button on my keyboard then I continue scrubbing oh well there's a new scene so let's go go back a little bit I just want a little part of that of that um, video so then I go further I grab my playhead again I don't want this scene for example so I scrub through it oh yeah that flower is really beautiful so I cut it I go further. Oh no, it's getting dark. I just want, yeah, I want a little bit of sunlight, so I cut it again. Oh, I don't want that river. No. Ah, yeah, that, that one is beautiful again. So we start somewhere. Let's start here. And we want the golden light. Yeah. And let's go. Oh yeah, there is, there is a little waterfall, which is also pretty beautiful. Cutting this one, You're cutting it again, and an end sequence. So let's go to that end sequence. Okay. So now uh, we uh, we slice the long video into several different segments. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess uh, now you're just getting rid of uh, those segments that you don't want. Exactly. The same thing you said before, the cutters threw the film away they don't, don't need. So I do the same thing. I select the, the parts that I don't want and I hit backspace. Same thing. Oh, that was the wrong one, was it? Yeah. No. Well, oh, it looks all right. Yeah, that's yeah. no, it wasn't the wrong one. So another one. I didn't want this one and I don't want the very beginning. And now I edit it down um, to just the parts of the why don't, slideshow I want. Why don't we save? I save it for now. <clears throat> and I hit play. And I have just the parts that I want. And editing this was super easy. And uh, I don't know whether it shows over the internet now, but the the 
cuts are really precise now, and yeah. that used to be difficult with uh, previous versions of Fire Magic that still used QuickTime. So we don't have any black frames in between, just a, a clean cut, and that's exactly what we want. And this is this was super easy editing out the parts of the video um, that we do not want. Mm -hmm. Let's let's think about you 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 shoot video um, with your iPhone, for example, and. Well, there is the beginning where you put it out of your pocket and 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 or back. For example, you you can get rid of all the uh, the the bumpy sections. For example, and just focus on on the important things. And it's super easy. You don't have to do it anywhere else in advance. You just do it right in place in Photomagico, mm -hmm. and that speeds up things quite a lot. Yeah, that that was super easy. And now now we're down to an edited version, um, just in no time. So keep in mind. Press the C key, like cut. While, while you're scrubbing through the slideshow. And by the way, uh, this uh, f new feature doesn't, uh, it's not specific to movies. You can cut any slide, uh, whether it contains movies, images, text, uh, even if you have animated stills, uh, for example, a, a pan a, across a panorama, you can cut a slide like that into two uh, segments as well. That is pretty amazing. So basically everything you see in timeline mode can be now sliced exactly. um, to your liking. That is pretty cool. But it only works in timeline mode. It doesn't work in, yeah, makes in sense. storyboard mode. Yeah, but there we have the, the, the time representation. So exactly. that's what we need yeah. there. Okay, so that is that. I think that pretty much covers everything we prepared. Mm -hmm. Before we start this webinar, we asked you to send in questions that you have. So first thing is we boiled down a couple of the questions and we're going to answer them and if you have any more questions make sure you put them in the chat oliver is going to send them to us and we're uh, answer as many as we can in time so let's just go to our next piece of paper um how do you sync audio and video the best um well one one uh one way as you just mentioned was um, the audio waveforms in, in the timeline mm -hmm. uh, view uh, are pretty helpful for that. You can adjust slide durations simply by dragging. Mm -hmm. So they match the audio uh, waveform, but the, the best way to do it is with audio markers, uh, which, and we did cover that in a previous uh, webinar. Okay, so it's the Photomagical 4 webinar. So if you want to look it up on... Um on either, probably, for example, YouTube, you just search for Photomagical 4 webinar, or we will have it on this page later on um, when the webinar is over. So the next thing is, well, how do we work with multi-images um, on the screen on, on one slide, text and photos combined on one slide, uh, combining photo and video, and photo and video and text? So basically, how to get multiple visual elements on one slide? Um, that's done uh, via multiple layers in the stage. You mm -hmm. can add up to six different layers uh, on uh, in one slide. Uh, it doesn't matter whether uh, those layers contain images or movies or text. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we uh, talked about in the 4.2 uh, webinar. Okay, so same thing you can find it on YouTube or later on on this page. So another... And question that, that we got, um, how to use Photomagico in conjunction with video editing applications like Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere? And um, what are the advantages of using Photomagico for, for example, still animation over the other two? Well, Photomagico was designed for, uh, with the photographer in mind, so you don't have to, uh, to have a video editing yeah. background. Yeah. So that's uh, one way to look at it. Uh, it's an application for photographers. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, Photomagico uh, doesn't do any pre-rendering. It does all uh, all the um, presentation on the fly on on the graphics mm -hmm. card. So it's uh, in a lot of cases it's, it's a lot faster to work with. Okay. Um, concerning uh, the other uh, the video applications, uh, how to interact with Photomagico, I guess uh, uh, you know a lo lot more about that. Uh, yeah. So. Like pretty much every image, uh, sorry, video editing application, um, is it takes takes ProRes four to two video. So if you export a, do a ProRes four to two export in Photomagico, you can just import that into Final Cut Pro ten into Adobe Premiere and just go from there. Because as Peter just said, 
animating stills is so much easier in, in Photomagico. Um, they just do it there. And one thing um, that we didn't mention is Photomagico can drive pretty much as much pixels as your screen or projector has. So there is no limit mm -hmm. to HD or maybe 4K. Um, if your projector can do more and if your computer handles, handles it, Photomagico will display the, the photos you have exactly. if they're and that large. E even, even if you have an old slideshow that wasn't designed with 4K in mind, uh, um, you, if the images have enough uh, pixels, the original, uh, uh, the megapixels yeah, of yeah. the original uh, image file, and you change the stage size to 4K, then you can present an old slideshow in 4K down the road uh, once you uh, can finally afford a monitor like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's a completely different different topic okay so the next question we got is um how to run a slideshow that was built with for example photomagical 3 um in photomagical 4 well photomagical 4 only supports a single file format it's called uh, fms file format and photomagical 3 also has support for that file format, mm -hmm. but it used to have uh, support for an older legacy file format. Mm -hmm. So if your Photomagico 3 slideshow is still saved in SSD or S uh, SSP uh, file formats, yep. you need to resave uh, that slideshow in FM FMS format, and then you can simply open it in Photomagico 4. Okay, that's, that's pretty easy. Okay, so the next thing, the next questions, um, question we have is well it's that is not really a technical one but um we still want to cover it so what are the key things that makes a superb well done slideshow stand out so you create a lot of slideshows from your travels and we well, covered that on, a, on, a, on on the last webinar as well but maybe give us a, a couple well, more pointers it's that's a quite a uh, broad question but i have time. I, uh, I guess it, it kind of depends on uh, what type of slideshow you're uh, planning to yeah. do for example um are you are you planning to create a, a short uh, three-minute uh, um, music video type mm -hmm. slideshow? Or is it a 10-minute theme-based slideshow? Mm -hmm. Or is it a one-hour slideshow about a recent trip to uh, some country that you did? Yeah. So different rules apply to those different categories of slideshows. Um, let's consider uh, the long one, uh, the, the travel slideshow. Um, Maybe if you traveled for three weeks and if you just dump in all of the images uh, in exactly the same chronological order, uh, um, the way it happened during your, your trip, uh, it will probably end up as, uh, as a slightly boring slideshow. Mm -hmm. So um, what I suggest uh, is um, that you um, group together um, those um, pictures that are thematically related into different blocks. And for some blocks, you add music uh, to uh, add some emotion. And, uh, and in other blocks, you just uh, uh, talk about, uh, you do a live narration. Mm -hmm. And um, structuring your slideshow in that way will ma make it much more engaging for, uh, for the audience. OK. So um, and if, if, the, if there is a slide, shorter slideshow, that, that counts for every pretty much every slideshow, but the shorter the slideshow is, the more important the music gets. And this is where the second part of this question um, taps into. So where do you get where do you get music from, and where do you get music from without getting broke? That that that's a tough question. You can there are a couple of sites out on the internet where you can buy royalty free stock music for reasonable prices. Um, we buy a lot of stuff from audiobank.fm, which is which is pretty good. But you can go to Triple Scoop, Scoop Music, for example, or um, sorry, I don't I remember the third one. Um, if you search for royalty free music, you can you can find pretty good stuff, and you can always go to gemendo.com, which is a um, Creative Commons website for music. If you license your um, works as well under a Creative Commons license. You can use the music from there. And it always depends a little bit on the copyright laws on your specific country. In some countries, it's not a problem at all just to grab any music that you can buy from iTunes. In other countries, like Germany and the USA, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's a bag of hurt. Um, so that's as much as we can say about, about the music. Um, so another question we got is, well, Someone has Photomagical 4.3.1, the 
the late, the last mm -hmm. version. So how do you upgrade to 4.4 and is there a cost for upgrading to 4.4? No, 4. 4. 4. Uh, if, you, if you have any version uh, 4, um, um, you can just upgrade for free. So basically just either for the magical will, will notify you. The other thing you can do is, let's just take a look here, is you click on Photo Magical in the menu bar up and here. And go to Software Update. And you go to Software Update. It, the the next question is is a question we get a lot from in support is, um, how do I make a DVD with the same resolution as the computer version, like this, the slideshow that you see on your screen? So, Well, um, unfortunately, that's not possible because uh, DVDs simply do not support the yep. high resolutions that uh, computer screens do nowadays. So let's let's look at, at a Retina screen that has two thousand five hundred something 60. pixels, and a DVD has six hundred and forty pixels. With you get the idea that the DVD standard just doesn't allow for more. Um, so if you want if you want to get the best version on your TV, a norm uh, sorry recent TVs all the modern TVs most of them have USB slots. So what you could do is you export the video with a I, I just show you for a second. Yeah. You you do a custom a custom video export, and yeah, you go for twelve eighty by seven twenty. Most oh. of most of the TVs. Why, why not go for full HD? You could you of course you could also go for nine twenty by ten eighty, which is full HD if your mm -hmm. TV supports it, which pretty much every modern TV does. You can go with that. And there's one thing you want to make sure is switch the format to MP four because that is the format pretty much every um, TV that I've encountered so far can just play. If you if you don't have a USB a USB port in your TV but have an Apple right. Apple TV then you can just uh, export for Apple TV and um, share it over your local home network. Okay, so much for that. No, come on. So, how does music ducking work and how do you trim audio? Well, um, if you want, uh, trimming audio is really uh, about uh, cutting away parts of the um, the audio at the beginning and at, at the end. Yeah, and uh, that's something that uh, was possible in Photomagic for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, all you have to do is um, is um, l let's create a new. A new slideshow. Let's just add some audio, and why don't we go to the uh, timeline for now? In the uh, options uh, panel, there's a control uh, called range, uh, which has two triangles. If you want to uh, get rid of uh, the beginning of the audio, just drag in the, uh, this triangle, or if you want to cut away part of the end of the uh, the audio, you drag in the right side triangle. So, uh, so the red sections are those that are cut away, while the white stuff uh, is the part of the audio that is going to remain. Okay, and you, al you also see the, the moment you move it up here, you also, whoops, I'm sorry. You also see it change down there in the timeline. Yeah, and uh, that's actually something. Um, if you don't want to fiddle with those uh, two triangles, um, there's an easier way to uh, to mm -hmm. change the endpoint. Simply uh, by pressing the Option key and dragging the way audio waveform in the timeline. That is especially easy when you have something where, sil where there is silence in the beginning. You just move it so far to the left that the silence is simply cut away. Exactly. And it starts right with the music. So that's about trimming. And then the other question was about uh, ducking. Correct. Um, ducking uh, is a feature that is used when you have multiple tracks of audio. Or, or maybe you even got a video in there as well. And you want to lower the uh, volume of the audio while somebody is speaking in the video so that uh, you mm -hmm. can still hear mm -hmm. the person talking. Yeah. And what you do is you um, you enable the ducking on the video mm -hmm. and then all the other audio tracks are, uh, the volume is lowered automatically. Let's, sh let's just show that for, for a short sequence. So we have now audio playing there. Let's go to the 
excuse me. Let's go to the mo modern movies. What do we have? We have something yeah. here. So let's just drop that in here and we go over to the options again. <clears throat> and down there, there is ducking. So we say low. For, uh, uh, well, uh, you, we have to select it for the video. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. We have to. Here, here. ducking yeah. and um, you can select how much you want to lower uh, the other audio. Like in this case, uh, the volume is, is uh, dropped to 50%. So let's disable it for, for this one. So let's just make sure we have, we have sound. Let's just play. So now audio is a little bit lower. And once the video is over, um, the, the volume of the music uh, uh, fades up again. That was pretty easy. So th that's uh, ducking uh, is basically automatic volume control. Yeah. Okay, so, so much about audio. So, well, what is different about this version, we already covered in the very beginning, but the, the important question someone asked is, can I still run it on my older MacBook with a system 10.7.5? Yes, you can, you can run uh, uh, version 4.4 .4 on 10.7. However, uh, it will still run in 32 bits and with QuickTime for technical reasons. So all of the uh, new advancements and benefits that we talked about today are only available on macOS 10.8 or 10.9. So if your computer still supports macOS 10.9, um, do the free upgrade. Um, it, it might really... Um, improve your photomagical experience. So the last question we have um, we have prepared, we already answered this, does Photomagical 4.4 now support Lightroom 5? Yes, it does. Okay, so now I have to look at my phone, not because I'm, I'm texting, well, basically I'm texting, but I'm texting with Oliver, who gives us more questions that you guys sent in. Oh, and I see a, a large badge on my, on my texts. So let's see. Um, so we have a question, is quality improved for images from Lightrooms? Did something change um, from how we get the images from Lightroom? Um, well, if you uh, use images directly from Lightroom, uh, that always used to work. However, um, depending on which size uh, images are being rendered by Lightroom, mm -hmm. uh, you get the exactly the same size that Lightroom renders. Uh, if you go to uh, the Lightroom uh, library menu, um, there is an option where you can select uh, whether um, Lightroom renders one-to-one -one, uh, full-size previews mm -hmm. or whether those previews are a little bit smaller. So you want to make sure the quality is set to maximum. That will make in, make in Lightroom. If you don't really want to depend on the setting in Lightroom, uh, one thing that you can do is uh, simply export your images from Lightroom yeah. in the format that you want. For, uh, for example, of, um, um, in uh, JPEG uh, with a specific resolution, export them to a, uh, to a folder and then uh, use those images from that folder. Yeah, that also works. Then uh, you, you've got a little bit more control over what you get. Okay. So th that that about Lightroom. Next thing is, can you add transition between the video cuts? Of course yes. you can. So let's just show that for a second. We um, we go back to the to the uh, amazing video cut I did before, and that just works as it always worked. You go to transition, and then you say, "Well, I want to do a dissolve." And, and that dissolve is still um, it was switch to this dissolve and then change the duration of oh, the dissolve. Oh, sorry, yeah, the this duration was still set to zero because I set it that, that beforehand. Same thing for, for this one here. We set it to a second and now let's go back here. And if you play, play that back now, we have a smooth dissolve between the video cuts that we did before. So you can use all the transitions that come in. Um, exactly. And you don't have to, you don't have to worry about um, transitions here. Okay, so the next question. Um, what about support for iPhone, fi iPhone 5S slow motion video? That is a good question. Um, I don't really... Um, so for, from, from, as far as I know, you can export the, the slow motion video from the iPhone 5S. I don't have an iPhone 5S yet, so um, yeah, I'm a little bit ashamed here. Um, you can export it as a, well, mm -hmm. let's say normal speed video and, or 
well, it, for the computer as a normal speed video. And if you then drop it in, it should just play fine. But that is a very good question. Um, we just have we to- We haven't tried that we yet. We have to double check. That is yeah. a good excuse to borrow my boss's iPhone 5S. And um, he's probably <laughs> gonna be very, very um, pleased with, with this decision I just made. <laughs> um, we will, yeah, we will try as soon as possible. So the next thing is, does cutting the video cut the audio too, or can you cut that separately? Um, it's uh, cut with the video, okay. the audio, yeah. So what you could do is just uh, export the audio separately beforehand and put it in as a as, a as an individual audio track. Audio track. Yes. That would be something that is possible. Yeah. Um, the next question is, can layers be locked together? Um, so you like, I, I guess he means like being grouped together. Not at the moment, but it's an interesting feature request. Okay, yeah. So the we'll keep it in mind. So the next question is, when trimming audio, is there a way to make where I want to cut to be more precise or should I just edit them in Adobe Auditions? So um, is, is there another way? Well, let's go back to audio trimming. Why, why do I go there? I just drag in a new audio file and we want to trim audio. Is there a way to make it to make it more precise? Well, I, I'm just I'm just gonna I ju I'm just gonna jump in mm -hmm. here for a second. So um, the one thing is, once you are in timeline mode, there is a time scale slider at the very bottom. So if you go all the way to the right, um, I'm not even all the way to the right, but I'm pretty much all the way to the right. So I, if I want to go as precise as possible, all I do oh, I still want the those to be shown. I can still move it there, and that is, I think that is pretty much as precise as it gets. So we start at the exact audio um, frame where the music begins, and as I said before, you can you can go even even further in and be super be super precise um, when when trimming when trimming audio. If I'm not mistaken, we also have. Fine tuning for in and out points. Exactly. If you uh, select fine tune uh, in point, you get this uh, little pop over where, uh, you, where you get a time code. Let's just start from the beginning because I totally forgot that um, you also want to see what I'm actually doing. So, <laughs> sorry about that. So, um, as I, uh, you probably already heard it and maybe you already made assumptions how it works. So, at the very bottom of the Photo Magico. Um, screen you have the time scale slider and if you crank it all the way to the right you see that resolution the optical resolution of the audio file gets really detailed so all i basically do is i move all that to the right and like this i can do a super precise edit and go to the very very point that i that i want to edit and well, if that is not precise enough, we just can still fine tune in and, in and out points. Exactly, and you can do that either by double clicking on the uh, the in point triangle, or you can select a fine tune in point from the pop up menu, and you get um, a, a time code text field where you, where you can input uh, it numerically. Either you input it numerically, or you just move the jog wheel, exactly. um, whatever whatever mm -hmm. suits your needs. So. And if you uh, want to listen to uh, where your input uh, in point is, you can click on that little play button. And then it starts from the point that you set yes. up. Okay. So more questions. You guys are on fire. Um, can you share share about the two and a half dimension effect? How is that done? Um, Oh, that takes a little bit of uh, extra time to do it. Uh, what we did uh, with this effect, um, we went to Photoshop and separated a single a still photo into two different layers in Photoshop. So um, we've got two different examples of that. One was uh, the surfer. Um, um, in one layer, we uh, just left uh, the surfer and erased all of the background. And in the second layer, you, you, you see it here. I can move the surfer around. He is extracted, as Peter said, uh, using Photoshop or any other image image editing application. And that, depending on the on the kind of image, uh, it does take a while. And the second layer is the background. Uh, for the background, I used a, a feature of uh, in that I think it was available in Photoshop uh, CS5. CS. 
Um, yeah. the, um, the context aware fill, mm -hmm. you just uh, simply you, you select uh, the surfer and then erase that selection. And um, the selection is being filled in with the background around uh, the person. So basically what you end up with is uh, the background layer um, uh, simply contains the water. Mm -hmm. And what we did then, um, the background layer can be um, saved as a, a JPEG file, yep. whereas the foreground layer with the uh, with the surfer uh, is mostly transparent. So you need to use a, a PNG file format uh, because of the tr transparency. Okay. And then you uh, simply create a slide with two different layers, the mm -hmm. background image with the water yep. and uh, a second layer on top with the surfer. And you animate animate those layers independently. Okay, so um, it's a little bit complex. We do have some uh, demo files um, that explain uh, explains the technique in in detail. And we also touched uh, touched on this in the last webinar in Photomagical Form mm -hmm. four uh, four point two webinar. So again, if you look look that up, I think we also have links to those files there. Um, just a little interruption here. So. There are a couple of more questions that we really want to answer, but maybe some of you don't have have more time. We all we are already up to one hour, so um, I would say we end the official um, part of the webinar here. If you still have questions, um, stay here. We will answer them. But before before we um, we let everyone go, I really wanted uh, wanted to say a couple of thank yous. Thank you for to you, Peter, mm -hmm. for coming here, taking the time, My of pleasure. course, for creating Photomagico. Thanks to Stefan, who is the other Photomagico de developer. Um, thanks to Oliver, our CEO, who is who is um, moderating the chat room. So the boss is really working hard here. Um, and thanks to the rest of the Boeing's team. Thanks to Angelica, Christiane, Achim, Gerd, Max, Peter K, Peter S, Oliver N, Stefan N, Stefan F. So I, I need to read that. So, so many people. Thanks to our PR team, Janice, Anya, Lauren, Megan, and Nancy, and of course to our awesome support team. Um, if you have ever come to, I have questions about Photomagic, you will reach one of them via email or, or phone. Um, thanks to Daria, thanks to Anne, thanks to Emmy, thanks to Norma, thanks to David, thanks to Dan, thanks to Ilya, thanks to Josh, and thanks to Nick B and Nick V. Thank you very much um, for helping us. And thank you for joining in. And we'll still be here and we'll answer more questions. But if you want to leave, if you have to leave, um, thanks for tuning in. And goodbye to everyone who has to leave. So we have, as advertised, we have more questions. And um, the next questions that we have whoops, is um, when I do titles, so mm -hmm. like letters, like words, um, let's just close this one for now. Um, uh, are they always just on one slide or can I stretch them over multiple slides? So what is what is the correct well, answer Well, basically uh, a title is uh, just on one slide, but if you want it to appear over multiple slides, why don't you just copy that title and paste it on, onto the next slide? Yeah, sure, that, that, is, that is a way. So um, if you still have questions, keep them coming. So don't worry about that. It's, we, we still have a little bit of time. Um, let's just show that for a second. So we, we add a title here. And of course, you want to see what I'm doing. So I'm adding a title. Go, going back to the storyboard view for now. Let's just, yeah, I just stick with title. And what I can do is I can right click and I can copy and I go, can go in here, edit, paste. And that pastes in. Oh, oh sorry. Paste on top. Paste in the title. The other option I have is I press the option key and just drag the title over, and that makes a copy of of the same thing. Exactly. And now, if we play that, let's let's do it. The same title will just stay in place. Correct. So it is it is definitely possible. Um, that is. Using the option key and just dragging it over is probably the easiest way of, of tackling, yeah, of tackling so. um, that issue. I don't know if we have any more questions from the chat. The problem is Oliver just can't answer me because he's looking at the live stream. So he's 30 seconds behind. So do we have any more questions? Because, well, we have more time. Let me try something. In the meantime, let me try something. So let's say I put, I put in a, an image, I put in a title. So the image is now 20 seconds long. So what I do is I create an animation for the title. 
So if I'm playing it back, there is animation of the title. But we learned something before. Um, we can cut everything, not just video. So what I'm doing the same thing, I'm cutting here. And even though I cut it into multiple pieces, the animation still is flowing through. So what I can do now is I can go in, select another image, throw it in there, select another one, throw it in there, and so on, and so on. So what I have now, I have continuous, a continuous title animation, but still different photos in the background. Exactly. So that is one thing of, of um, using, using the new tools of Photomagical 4.4. And while we were talking about it, there are more questions. Um, I have issues importing from Aperture. Can't see right the the library structure of it. Um, you should be able to see the the library structure of Aperture. So uh, maybe that's something we should uh, discuss directly. Uh, j just generally, you find Aperture in the right hand side, and there you should be able to see to see your albums and see your see everything and see all your photos. So if that is not working for you for some reason. Um, just make sure you contact support, support at boings.com or to go to boings.com slash connect and get in touch with us because then something is, is going wrong on on, uh, on your end and we need to fix that and need to find out where that issue comes from. The next question is, um, can you accelerate or slow down um, the frame rate on videos? No, that's not possible at the moment, but that's also... Something that's uh, it's technical po uh, technically possible, so uh, we should uh, remember that feature request. Yeah, sure. Um, so the next question, compared to Photomagical 3.8, how fast is the rendering speed of Photomagical 4.4? Uh, you're talking about the rendering speed at export. export. I, I guess, yeah. uh, it's gotten quite a lot faster. And why you you've uh, so. I, uh, you've noticed that. Uh, I, I sat down with a stopwatch. As Peter said before, it really depends on what kind of content you have mm -hmm. there. If you have a lot of videos, well, they need to be decoded. They need to be, um, well, they're a little bit more complicated than than um, photos. The the best result that I got with uh, sitting down with a stopwatch was we I got a, about 15 times as fast as before. 15? It, it was wow. amazing. That's that's just okay. the best thing. So well, so yeah. average was like four to six times as fast, which is still okay. which is still a lot. And um, you can you can see you can see the the progress bar flying by. Um, just you can download Photomagical four point four and let's say four point three or yeah. three point eight side by side and just run it from different folders and just just do a comparison. You will see the difference. So that's that's what I can say. Um, Oh, an interesting question that comes that comes in a lot. Maximum file size for photos, and um, so what is first first half of the question? What is the maximum file size for photos? Well, there isn't really a file size limit. You can uh, use any uh, size image you want. However, uh, bear in mind, since uh, the files are being uh, loaded and uh, rendered on the fly while the slideshow is being presented, um, larger file, si uh, file sizes also takes, take longer to load. Sure. So um, it might not make sense to have humongous files uh, um, if you use uh, slightly uh, smaller JPEG files uh, they load much faster, and that way you can do more uh, quicker edits. Correct. And another thing I can I can show you here on the on the example that I have. Um, so here we have we set up a slideshow of, um, which is optimized for twelve eighty by seven twenty, and um, we put in files that came straight from the camera, and they are pretty large. And so Photomagica displays those little exclamation marks down here in the timeline. And if I click on it, or in the storyboard as well, and if I click on them, um, we get the info that might be um, uh, 3600 by uh, 2700 pixels is maybe a little bit too much for a 1280 by 720 um, slideshow. Yeah, and uh, this, uh, this note is just a hint that you might want to scale down the image once you're done authoring your slideshow. 
um, if you want to conserve some space on your hard disk. Uh, however, uh, since we did talk about uh, th this, these nice new 4K displays that we can't afford yet, but we might be able to afford them a couple of, in a couple of years. Um, you may want to leave those images at the original uh, resolution and just disregard that note, mm -hmm. because uh, then in a couple of years you can simply change uh, this, uh, the stage size to a 4K and dis uh, present the same slideshow in 4K which wouldn't be possible if you scale down the images now. The one thing that you can do if you want if you want to make sure that w during playback on a screen that you already know everything is as smooth as possible and as fluent as possible and as has as much performance as possible. Um, what I would recommend is duplicating that slideshow. Just saving it as, duplicating it in the Finder um, and then open a copy of the mm -hmm. slideshow, of the finished slideshow um, and then do and do this trick I, I saw before. Um, you click on the exclamation point and then you say scale down all images. Just do it on the duplicate. That will compress the uh, images down to as small as possible. Um, mm -hmm. So they still look good on the on the resolution you set up. And then save this one and use this one for presentation and still keep keep the original version with the large with the large files. That's um, a pretty good idea. So, that way you get the best of, best of both worlds. And most of the times then the then the compressed version of the slideshow is a lot smaller when it comes to mm -hmm. file size. So you can you don't have to worry about having two copies. Yeah. And it'll uh, play back more reliably on s slower computers. Correct. So with with most most of the modern Macs, you are probably not going to run into problems with mm -hmm. with like most most of the cameras. So more questions. Uh, the, the second part of this question and is. 7, uh, 72 DPI best? Well, the DPI uh, um, aren't really relevant for Photomagico. Okay. Um, uh, the only thing that matters is how many pixels are in your image. Mm -hmm. And uh, an image can be uh, zoomed, uh, scaled any way you want to. Uh, whether those pixels are in 72 DPI or 300 DPI, it doesn't really matter. That's uh, that's uh, really a concept that was only relevant in the print world. Correct. So don't just don't worry about it. Just just think about the, the how many megapixels you have and that the raw the raw pixel size. Yeah. So we have a lot more questions. So boy, that's a lot. So um, am I correct then that Photomagico is using the rendered proof from Lightroom? Yes. Uh, it's uh, the render preview um, that's being used uh, when you drag in your images from... Do we have Lightroom yeah, here? If you drag in an image from, from Lightroom, let's see. Uh, I think we have... Where do we have? Maybe I just put it in the folders. Uh, Maybe I just well, created something black. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry about that. We don't ha really have anything uh, uh, in Lightroom in this account right now. But if you drag in the images from Lightroom directly into the storyboard, uh, they are the uh, previews that are rendered by Lightroom. And that's what I mentioned before. Um, depending on which size of previews uh, Lightroom renders, that is what you get when you drag it in. So you might be better off exporting from Lightroom in exactly the the, uh, the resolution, the size that you want. Create a, a published service in, in Lightroom um, just for Photomagico with, with a smart publishing thing where you just tag images, for example, Photomagico with Slideshow. And like this, every time you update files, those this folder structure will be updated and you can access it from Photomagic again and create, uh, drag in new images. So that is probably the easiest way of going about it. Um, that would be ex at least my recommendation. So more, 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 more. Um, what is the best file format, Matt, to use for the Photomagic slideshow? Um, depends. Uh, um, I prefer uh, to use uh, JPEG simply because the files are smaller and they load much more quickly, which is important if you want to do really short uh, slide durations mm -hmm. um, and not run into any timing problems. You could use uh, larger file form like TIFF files because, uh, TIFF, uh, without uh, uh, the lossy compression that JPEG has to, yeah. av to avoid compression artifacts. Um, I guess it really depends on uh, how much important you place on um, 
um, image quality versus timing. Uh, um, so it's your choice. So I would, from from my experience, so if you use panning and zooming in Photomagic, I wouldn't worry about JPEG compression at all because you have moving images anyway. And um, so the viewer's attention is not on the on the nitty gritty details of of file yeah. compression compression. But if you have like if you hook up a 4K projector and you still they are they don't move, you might want to consider using TIFF images. Yeah, but uh, don't uh, use the original RAW file. Yeah. Uh, those simply take too long to uh, to load uh, on even modern computers. Correct. So. Correct. So the next question, um, another video question: Can you crop or pan video? Yes, absolutely. May I? Uh, sure. You. Okay. So let's go back to the screen. So I'm getting in a video. Let's. Yeah, that fits fits with the snow theme. So cropping video. Um, there there are a couple of ways of cropping video. So f first, let's just disable animation and just crop video. So one thing is if I just Want this part of the video? I just zoom into the video, just as I would with um, with an image, and like this, I cropped I cropped the part of it away. Well, maybe the question was related to uh, time uh, cropping, so that is Even, also possible. That is also possible. It's the same th same thing as with audio. I can just um, adjust the range, so I'm I'm cropping I'm cropping away the duration of the of the video. The, the end and the beginning, so I crop both. I crop both versions. So the another another way mm. of of cropping video, um, if I don't want the the original aspect ratio, um, another way of cropping it is using a mask. So that is something we showed in fo the Photomagico 4.2 webinar. I'm just really um, covering it super quick. So I'm I'm adding a mask, moving that over. So now we've got a square video. Now we have a square video. Um, and that was pretty easy. I don't didn't have to do anything too fancy about it. And the other thing is, can I pan video? Of course you can pan video because that is nothing but a, um, a, a like a pan and zoom on a photo. So mm -hmm. I zoom in on both parts of the video. Let's yeah, let's go for the same thing. And now I can go from left. To right, and you will see. So let's turn off audio here. Uh, you don't really see it now because, well, there's so much motion in this <laughs> video sequence anyway. But yeah, but uh, you can, um, like, let's say you've got a video that was taken on a tripod. It was really static. You can add the zoom in effect later. So, and some something uh, uh, we did when we were in in Norway um, this year, and we took a a. Time lapse with uh, with eye stop motion using a, a DSLR camera, and we just took the time lapse video in uh, 4500 by uh, 3200, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was a huge video, and we just put it into Photomagico and just put a panning effect over the over the um, time lapse in post in Photomagico just by panning from left to right. It looked like we had a we had a moving we had a moving camera, which is pretty expensive gear. And like that, if you have high resolution videos, you can even do that with with those. So yes, all of that is possible. I hope that answers the question. The next thing is, um, can Photomagical export as Blu-ray DVD format, as Blu-ray disc format? Um, well, uh, you can export in uh, a ProRes video and use that as uh, an input format uh, for Toast Titanium. For example, yeah, Toast, for example, burns Blu-ray. So you need a Blu-ray burning um, application. So as Peter said, do the do the um, the ProRes video export in HD, and then you can burn it to a um, Blu-ray disc if you have a Blu-ray burner, of course. So let's go here. Um, does Photomagica store media on the project file based on the trick? I would say yes. Yeah. So does it does it store its media files inside of the the Photomagical file? Yes, um, and uh, if you want to transfer uh, that slideshow file to another computer, everything that is needed for for the slideshow is inside inside the file. So you can tran uh, yeah. you just drag a single file onto uh, 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 let's say uh, a USB stick or uh, another hard drive and move it to another computer. Okay, there is uh, one more question. 
um, because uh, someone missed the beginning. Why do almost all my videos from my cameras need to be converted now? That it destroys my workflow completely and causes a lot of additional work and time to me. So let's just, in, in one or two sentences, sum it up. There will be a recording of the webinar, so you can just rewatch it again and, and make sure you understand why it's happening. Just to, to sum up, um, why do we have to re-encode video? Well, um, when Apple decided to leave QuickTime behind and move on to AV Foundation, they really started from scratch and uh, only supported a few modern uh, codecs and file formats. And all of the old uh, files that are not compliant uh, yeah. with these new, uh, with these modern codecs, um, will have to be re-encoded so they can still be used with AV Foundation. So, uh, but on the other hand, if you have if you record from, for example, for, from an iPhone or from AVCHD camcorders, they that record in H.264 straight away, you can use those videos yes, in Photomagic without. But it's uh, unfortunately all the um, uh, HDV files or HD files yeah, yeah. Uh, cameras that were pretty popular a couple of years ago are not supported directly anymore, and those files will have to be re-encoded. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I think. That covers pretty much all the questions I have here. So thanks again for um, for taking part for your time, and I hope you uh, took away a lot um, <clears throat> from this webinar. If you have any more questions, make sure you um, contact our support department. Um, they'll be happy to help you. And um, I think we see each other again when we have the next major new amazing mm -hmm. update. So thanks again for watching, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.